And you have a great piece at that that website at the lever, which I highly recommend as a website. It's great. And it's about um, Joe Biden's alleged victory. Uh, he's being praised, obviously, for this debt ceiling. So um, much winning. So much, so much winning. winning. Yeah, so much winning. Yeah, So much winning. So what is this, uh, this alleged big win? How do you see this, uh, this big win? Who are the winners and who are the losers? So, uh, there's been this deception going on where the story supposedly starts only a few weeks ago, uh, when, in fact, I start the story um, back in November. Uh, and, and the story looks different depending on where you start the story. So the story that Joe Biden is telling the story of supposed victory is a story that begins only a few weeks ago. They have to raise the debt ceiling. If they don't raise the debt ceiling uh, at that point, there's going to be a default. Uh, and in this story, there's nothing Joe Biden can possibly do other than give in to Republican demands. And the best he can do, the big victory, is that he didn't do uh, every single thing that Kevin McCarthy wanted. He only did uh, some of those things. That's that's the story that starts a few weeks ago. Uh, and Democratic lawmakers. Uh, rank and file Democratic lawmakers are saying, you know, who voted for this are saying, look, it was ultimately only a choice between uh, defaulting or giving into some of what Kevin McCarthy wanted and avoiding default. That's, that's a great story uh, if it only starts a few weeks ago. Um, and I know that we live in a goldfish culture where everybody forgets their entire world every 15 minutes, uh, particularly liberals, uh, because to remember the world longer than 15 minutes is to learn some inconvenient truths. So Let's rewind the tape back to um, right after the midterm elections. So right after the midterm elections, uh, the need to raise the debt ceiling was obviously no secret um, to anybody uh, whose job it is, is to pay attention to such things. Uh, and right after the election, Bernie Sanders said, uh, we need to raise the debt ceiling in the lame duck session when the Democrats still control the Congress. Uh, and Janet Yellen, of all people, uh, also said, yeah, that, that we, we should do that. Just right, clean debt ceiling. The, hike, don't attach anything to it, the end. And the Democrats, I'm sure you'll be surprised to learn, uh, didn't try to do that at all. Uh, in fact, in a moment where the quiet part was screamed out loud, Dick Durbin went to the press, the number two Senate uh, uh, Democrat, Senate Majority Whip, and said, we just don't have time to do it. We're just, we just don't feel like making the time to do this. And, and they could have done it, by the way, through reconciliation. Now, Folks who will acknowledge this, uh, which is not very many folks, um, folks who will acknowledge this will say, well, it wasn't clear that Manchin and, and Cinema would, would vote for this, which may be true, may not be true. Uh, it was never tested. It was never, never even voted on, never even brought up. And uh, there's a, a good point that the American Prospects David Dayan makes, which is that at that point, you're choosing, well, do we want to negotiate with Manchin or do we want to negotiate with Kevin McCarthy. Right. Right. Cause like you're going to have to raise the debt ceiling or default. So would you rather have a, a, a give and take with, with somebody who's officially in your party or the incoming Republican house speaker and the Democrats chose the latter uh, and they chose the latter. Uh, and then when McCarthy obviously made his demands, uh, the, some progressives said, just invoke the 14th Amendment, take it to court and end this nonsense. Uh, and the Biden White House quickly dumped cold water on that. Didn't even want to try that. Uh, and so what you're left with is a story that uh, is that the outcome is not some unfortunate, we had to do it kind of story. Now with the Democrats celebrating, I actually think that they're, uh, they're being honest. That, that this is where they wanted to be. So then the question is, all right, well, where are we? Well, okay, we averted a, 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 def a default for now for two years. We've restarted student debt payments in the middle of an affordability crisis. We've made it harder for very poor people to get uh, food stamps. Uh, in the middle of a climate crisis, um, uh, this week, the federal government says more CO2 in the atmosphere uh, than in recorded history. Uh, you're passing a, uh, you're expediting a fossil fuel pipeline 
that will uh, be uh, responsible for emitting the equivalent of 20 or 25 coal plants worth of greenhouse gas emissions, according to various estimates. You've expedited that. Not only have you expedited it, you've actually put in language trying to prevent any court challenge to it. And you've increased the military budget to record levels while uh, putting in place uh, cuts to the uh, uh, non-defense, what's known as the non-defense discretionary budget, aka social programs. So this happens, and now the DNC is airing ads asking us to thank Joe Biden for this, and Biden is giving an Oval Office speech saying this is a big win. So Again, if you put all of this together, had a chance to do something, refused to, do, to, to even try to do something, uh, could have used the 14th Amendment, refused to do that, signed up to a deal that did all of what I just mentioned, then you're celebrating it as a big win. What you're saying is, is that this is exactly what the Democratic Party wanted. I mean, that, that's, that's, I mean, what other takeaway is there? And so I think what's, I guess, good about this, and there's not much good because it's going to be a lot of human suffering and a lot of human pain. What's good about this is that this is actually, if you're willing to look at those facts, this is actually a moment of honesty. This is a moment of clarity. This is what the Democratic Party, or at least the Democratic leadership and rank and file sort of middle of the Democratic Party, this is what it wants. This is its agenda. This is what its priorities are. And you overlay that, of course, with Joe Biden's own history giving speeches on the floor of the Senate saying that he really, really wants to work with Republicans right. to cut government spending. This is what this party is. And, and look, if liberals and rank and file Democratic voters are happy with that, you're, you're getting exactly what, what your party wants. If you're not happy with that, then something's got to change.